If you've heard of NFL Game Day, Sony's old NFL series that was exclusive to the PS1 and PS2, you may have heard of the even more obscure NCAA Game Breaker series. It doesn't get a lot of recognition. In fact, I'm sure for a lot of you watching right now, this is the first time you've ever heard of the series. But it was actually pretty good. I recently started playing Game Breaker 04 after watching this YouTube video by The League, and I was just drawn to how fun to watch the on-field gameplay was. Something about this 21-year-old game just feels ahead of its time, from the juke moves, tackle animations, and hurdles, to the interesting catching mechanics and passing system that are eerily similar to what you'd find in modern Madden titles. Of course, NFL Game Day has basically the same gameplay as Game Breaker, but something about 989's gameplay feels like it suits the college game more. You get those high scoring affairs with little defense like we see in the league's video, but you can also find yourself scoreless when facing tougher competition, or you can light up the scoreboard as a powerhouse playing a small school. The challenge, or lack thereof depending on the game, translates well to college football, especially for the now considered retro 2003 era. And given that every single college football game that released after this was made by EA and EA only, this might just be the most realistic playing college football game of all time. I'm not joking. EA's old NCAA games were immensely popular, however. 2K did make college games for a bit as well, but even they were already out of the picture by the time Game Breaker 04 released, and not for any exclusive licensing reasons. I have a video on 2K's last college football game on my channel if you're interested. My point is that EA's college games were easier to pick up and play, ran smoother, and had stronger marketing. But NCAA Game Breaker 04, when compared to say NCAA Football 04 from EA, feels more realistic, more challenging, and it still has plenty of depth. It feels closer to modern Madden than PS2 Madden, but in a good way. And graphically, I think it looks pretty good for a game from 03. I'm not saying it's better than EA's classics, but it's definitely worth a look because it's different and no one ever seems to talk about it. From creative school to the career mode to the on-field gameplay, let's dive deep into NCAA Game Breaker 2004, Sony's forgotten and final college football game. A game that might just be the best college football game you've never played. Take a look at this gameplay. I'm using Miami during one of their most stacked years, with Frank Gore leading the offense while John Beeson, Entro Roll, and Sean Taylor headline the insane defense. These guys are known as Game Breakers, hence the name of the game. When throwing the ball, you have to have your feet set and not be under pressure if you want to deliver an accurate ball with most quarterbacks. This feels different at first, as back then, EA's college games weren't so strict and you could throw dimes on the run. So while Game Breaker might be a little frustrating at first, the more you play, the more realistic you'll find it to be, as you now have to account for more variables than usual. Once the ball is in the air, you get a few options for how you want to catch it, whether that's aggressive catch, laying out for it, or possession catching it, just like in Madden post Madden 16. What's interesting to me though is that, unlike in Madden, you also have to time the catch. You can't just hold down square while the ball is in air and watch your player do what you want for you. You have to choose the exact moment when the receiver goes up for the ball. Again, like passing, it seems difficult at first, and can be frustrating, but once you get the hang of it, it opens up a ton of user control and lets you catch the ball exactly as you want. For example, on this play right here, the ball is tipped up by a defender, but thanks to the catching mechanic, I can wait and time my catch post tip, allowing me to catch the ball manually after it had been tipped in the air. It's really unique in a football game to be able to do that manually. Running the ball feels challenging and fair as well. You get a speed boost with X, and you try and find a hole and run through it, but if you spend too much time dancing, you'll run out of stamina and get tackled shorter than you might want. You can get huge runs, but it's not as easy as it was on the EA College games. It's a lot of fun to run though, and it's easier than passing when you first start the game, but mastering both is extremely rewarding. Speaking of gameplay, you can actually tweak it to your liking. 
The game has a simulation style and an arcade style, again, ahead of its time. You can adjust game speed, clock speed, AI running, AI run defense, AI pass defense, AI passing, and even AI IQ. So you can manually adjust how intelligent the AI plays against you. That's pretty cool. Visually, this game looks amazing in my opinion for a 21 year old game. The animations are pretty smooth, but it can be slow and sluggish at times as you have to wait for an animation to play out before starting a new one. The blocking and tackling looks really solid though, and some hits are huge and really feel like a proper hit stick, even though this game obviously doesn't have a hit stick, you just press square. The player models, uniforms, and stadiums all look fantastic for a 21 year old game too. I came away super impressed with the visuals, considering no one ever talks about this game. Gamebreaker 04 also has some nice attention to detail. Practice facilities have banners for school championships. The main menu shows each team's uniform on a player model in motion when selecting teams, and create a school is actually really in depth. You get to create a name, choose a logo, and then create the entire uniform design along with 25 number fonts, 26 pant styles, team building focus, generate a roster, choose between six stadiums, and then choose between six turf or grass options. Then you can select a midfield logo, individual end zone designs, and even preview the stadium halfway through. You can then play with the school in any game mode, allowing you to either import an existing school not in the game, something like Kennesaw State, or even make your own fantasy school, like Cream State shown here, the creamiest program in the country. The in-game presentation is a bit weak, but presentation was never much of a strong point for these older football games until 2K released ESPN NFL 2K4 a bit after this game's release. The commentary isn't bad, but it's a bit flat and unexciting, and there isn't much in terms of a pre-game halftime or post-game celebration. There are some nice little touches, such as when the camera pans to the mascot or cheerleaders, but it's really the gameplay and graphics that make this game fun, along with the game modes. Those game modes include career mode, which is essentially dynasty mode. You create a coach and choose which side of the ball you focus on, and then you join a school in need of some help, such as Tulane, or take over your custom created school. You can edit your schedule, look at stats and rankings, and after the season you get offers from better schools or worse schools based on your team's performance. The end goal is to become a coaching legend who started from the bottom. Unlike EA's dynasty modes, there's not much of a focus on recruiting players and building up one specific team, but instead it's a literal coaching career mode. It's a lot of fun and the deepest mode in the game. You can even play in bowl games featuring other teams just for fun if you want to within this mode. Another mode, Bowl Season, allows you to play through a season with hopes of getting to a bowl game and winning it. Practice and scrimmage are pretty self-explanatory, and Tournament Season is yet another part of this game that feels ahead of its time. Like Bowl Season, it's a single season mode where you pick a team and play through games, but at the end of the year, you enter essentially a playoff tournament, just like how modern college football is set up. That's wild for 2003. There's also a regular tournament mode, skipping the season, allowing you to create a custom bracket to jump right into. For its time, NCAA Game Breaker 2004 was considered mediocre and fine, but nothing special. Many critics were not happy with the manual catching system or the difficulty of throwing, but as the game has aged, these features make for a more challenging experience that feels more realistic and modern than just about any other college football game from this era. If you've played NCAA 14, 13, 11, 06, etc. to death, and you just want to play something different, something more challenging, something new, before the new College Football 25 drops, this is an excellent choice. I really do feel like this is a good game and I'm not sure why no one ever talks about it or plays it. The visuals hold up well today, it's exciting, it's fresh, it has the depth, it has great rosters, it has creative school, it, ha it even has aggressive catches, hurdles, modern looking animations. Due to a lack of sales, this was the last Game Breaker title, and the following year, the only Sony football game to release was NFL Game Day 05 for the PS1 only. I have a video on that strange gem too. 
Now that college football is returning to the video game landscape, however, now is a better time than ever to give Game Breaker 04 a shot. Give it a fair look, and I promise you'll have a good time. This might actually be the most realistic simulation college football video game ever made. That worked against it in 2003, but 21 years later, maybe the community can finally give it some appreciation. Thanks for watching.